This is Twit. Let's peel back a little bit. So Cast AR was why you were here initially. I would say looking at Cast AR through the lens of time, at that point, there was such energy around uh, VR and AR that that seemed like the right time for the technology. Why? Why? At what point did things change for Cast AR? What happened there? So um, maybe I should back up just like a year prior to that or two years prior to that. So I was hired into Valve Software to help them put together their hardware R&D department. And so we put this dream team together just to figure out how to make games more fun and how to bring the family together on the Steam platform, which is Valve's um, content distribution platform. And we did a ton of fundamental research for years and years before the Oculus and before the HTC Vive. And we just brute forced um, AR, VR, we were reading people's minds with electrodes and looking at their pupil dilation. And uh, I like to say I got to see 20 years into the future there just through pr- pure brute force. And like, that's where I got hooked on augmented reality. I'm like, this is the platform of the future. I have no clue how um, long it's gonna take for us to get there where the minority report style, like walking around the world, just kind of waving your hands and having your compute just with you blended into the world is gonna happen. But, you know, Valve and I parted ways. They didn't wanna do AR. They wanted to like double down on virtual reality and they cut the whole AR team. So a group of us that left got pushed out of Valve, um, actually went back to Valve and bought some of these um, optical techniques from them and got you know free and clear access to that to develop Cast AR. And so back in those days, um, you know, we weren't as savvy about marketing. We were just a bunch of engineers, like we're gonna do this thing for technology's sake. And um, we just turned on a Kickstarter after showing a couple prototypes of what we could do. And we did okay, we raised a million dollars and there was a lot of excitement, but the whole industry was like a buzz at that point with VR technology. And there wasn't a lot of thought going into making a completely bundled um, system. Like you mentioned before we started the show that you got the Quest, like the Mm -hmm. Quest is a great bundling of you know, all of the compute and all the games and everything in just one little tight package so you can do VR. We weren't thinking about that. No one was thinking about that. Um, And so we took off and we were mostly focused, but we weren't as highly focused as today. Um, We shipped out some of our first units on the Kickstarter, like two to 300 of them uh, went out the door. We moved to Silicon Valley and uh, got wrapped up in the Silicon Valley um, startup culture down here, raised some money from some angel investors and then uh, built our team out, got a really nice team put together. And then we took money from um, one of the bigger venture capital um, guys down here. And that's when things kind of went off the rails for us. Mm. So they had totally different ideas for where we should go with our products. So they're like, quit messing around with shipping those Kickstarter products, you know, and start focusing on what we want you to focus on. And uh, I'm pretty proud like we hadn't shipped out all of our units for Kickstarter, but I insisted on at the time that we refund 100% of our Kickstarter backers money, even people that had received units. And uh, I'm pretty sure our investors you know, <laughs> would have been fine if we would have just like ignored them, but, yeah. um, but we didn't. And uh, we got sent off this different path and uh, they started replacing our leaders in the company. They started bringing their buddies in and then the company, like they wanted to fluff it up really big, make it huge. Um, we went from like 20 people to 90 people overnight. And just wow. <laughs> these executives came in, just burned through the money. And next thing we know, we were just out of money and we had to shut down. And so the core team is just kind of looking around like, what just happened? Like we had such a magical thing and it was just yanked out from underneath us. And so a group of us came together and we're like, well, that was screwed up. Um, how can how can we like buy back the assets? I found out we could buy the assets back. It was actually Nolan Bushnell who called me the day after um, Cast AR had to suddenly shut down and say like, hey, Jerry, you know, I've been around enough companies that I've messed up. And <laughs> I think that's how he put it. <laughs> He's like, I know, I I could see this coming a mile away. Like as soon as the Disney execs came in, you were in trouble. Oh no. And he's like, but just, just remember one thing, there's always a way. And so, you know, a couple of days went by and I started thinking about asking people and found out I could buy the assets. 
And so I called up a bunch of the core team. I'm like, hey, we could buy the assets and we could like do it the right way this time. And so we bought the core technology and uh, we two, that was about two years ago. And we've been heads down, like refining the product and making sure that we're really, really clear on how we're gonna market it and how we're gonna bundle it with software and do it right this time and not make those same mistakes, and which is interesting. I, yeah. uh, in the last two years, I had opportunities to take different uh, venture capital money and, uh, you know, along the way, I've learned like some of the code words, like we'll give you money, but we need adult supervision in the room <laughs> and uh, we'll give you the money if you have adult supervision and like, mm, mm. I know what that means. Yeah, I know it what means, that means. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we actually had to walk away from money along the way and we've been very careful about who we're taking money from and we're very careful about what market we go after. Yeah, and I imagine uh, you know, and you hear you know people who have who have created and and been successful successful entrepreneurs, you know, say it a lot. Like you fail multiple times before you win, and really, it's it's the price of the education, right? Like I'm sure at the time it really sucked to have Cast AR be this really great thing, thing that you you, know, you held close to your heart and you saw in a long future with, and suddenly it just fizzles up and, and shrivels up. You get to that point, man. That's got to feel like a like a defeat, but you know that that's not how life works. Thankfully, you were able to kind of take those lessons and and the IP, which is amazing that you were that you were able to do that and turn it into something uh, like Tilt Five. And you've learned those lessons, and that's the price of of learning. There was a, a a picture of someone like after the company shut down, the very same day the company shut down, like kind of the core people, the core 20 people or so that had been there the longest. We all went out for drinks. Someone snapped a picture and sent it to me like a couple months ago and I'm crying. And it took me right back mm. to those emotions of like being oh, yeah. robbed of this opportunity. And uh, yeah, I can't tell you how agonizing it was and how, how I felt like because I'd got stripped you know, I was completely stripped of any power in the company. I was just told to sit in the corner for the last year of the its operation. Oh. Um, but I felt, even though all that stuff had happened, I felt that I'd let you know, like all my employees down, yeah. and and let my, you know, the the fans of what we were doing down. And so it was agonizing. Man, and what I'm what starting pressure? To get choked up now thinking no, about it. No, I hard I, to I, I that time. I I feel it, man. I'd like I I uh, yeah. I can't imagine being in that position and watching it crumble. Um, but that's how Silicon Valley is, though. I mean, absolutely. You know, it's it's probably a foreign concept to some of your listeners that come from you know other places. But entrepreneurs down here really rally behind you, and when it when the the poop hit the fan. I uh, had tons of people like Nolan Bushnell and just people reaching out to me like, oh, it's happened to me a dozen times. It's okay. You know, that's just how it works down here. You know, if it would have worked out, like if the VC's plans of like fluffing us up and making us really big worked, I would be here on triangulation saying like, I'm a genius. I got sold yeah, to right. Apple and right. now we're the Apple glass and I'm a genius. Like, <laughs> but instead I have to like eat some uh, <laughs> humble pie and say like, well, yeah, we screwed that up bad yeah. and we learned from it and we're going to do better. 